if you need to run a part that's too long for the Z1 stroke of your machine, you're gonna have to have a rechuck operation. And today I'm gonna show you how to program that and run it. So a quick explanation of what rechucking is, we're gonna run an eight and one eighth inch part on a machine that only has six and a half inches of Z1 stroke. So we can't run the whole thing in one shot. The machine just doesn't have enough travel. So what we're gonna have to do is run part of it, stop, open the main, back it up, grab some more material so we can turn the rest of the part. So to do that, you have some, some queuing and rechucking and work shifts that we have to do and take into account for. And we're gonna go over that with the screen capture in Simcoe. So here's our demo program. Right hand cut off, eight inch 127 overall. This is a, a gutted version of a part that we actually run. Fix my spelling there. So we're doing a turn and then we've got the rechuck sequence here. So we're rechucking four and a half inches. So we're going to turn What's our Z move? We're gonna turn four and a half inches, and then we're gonna rechuck four and a half inches, and then we're gonna turn some more to that final eight inches, 127 overall length. So what it is, let me go up here, and uh, if you're watching in Belarus, here's your uh, synchronizing your streams. So here we have side one, side two, and we've got synchronized scrolling on, so all of our queuing commands are teed up. So the first thing we're doing, we're turning to Z inches, four and a half. Z four and a half inches. We're picking the tool up, then we stop the spindle, and now we've got this, this weight code. And again, label everything, calling tool 30. This is a little bit of a two for one. We're gonna do some supported machining, take that and apply it to your situations as needed, but we're moving the sub up to grab the end of the part to hold it while the main is rechucking. The issue with rechucking is that if you don't hold it with the sub, there's nothing holding onto the bar. So if your guide bushing is loose and you have a dumb bar loader like the edge, where it doesn't know where it is, it's just pushing on the bar. If your guide bushing's loose, it's gonna push your bar out and it's gonna f your overall length. You know, maybe the main will drag the bar back a little bit when it rechucks if you're not holding onto it. But the, the point of having the sub come up and grab it is to hold the bar in place so that the part can't move while it's doing the rechuck. So your bar's not wiggling a little bit you know, moving maybe two, three, ten thou. So we're gonna move the sub up, Z 4.75 inches. This is in the machine coordinates. So you could also go G53 if you really wanna absolutely 100% define your machine coordinates. So this is not tied to the part. This is a, a hard point inside the machine's coordinate system. So Z 4.75 inches, a dwell, clamp the sub. So the sub is moving up over the end of the part and it's clamping, another half second dwell and then another weight code, and we're going back over to the front. And there's our actual rechuck. Stop in the spindle again, belt and suspenders approach. Optional stop, main chuck open, dwell. So here's the meat and potatoes. We are G0, W minus 4.5, incremental minus 4.5 in Z. So we're gonna open the main, and we're gonna move back four and a half inches. And then we have a four and a half inch work shift to move our zero point. Otherwise, you're not, you're not going to achieve anything you're you're gonna be four and a half inches off. It's gonna be, it's gonna be terrible because your zero point is going to move with the sub. So when you come back in, it's gonna try and push your bar out four and a half inches and nobody's gonna be happy. We move how much we wanna rechuck and then we have a work shift that has to match how much we move to move the zero point. Close the main spindle, another dwell. Second turn, another queuing command. And what we're gonna do here, we're gonna sink the spindle. This is supported turning, so it's it's a long part. Sometimes you can get away with it, but especially if you have a thin noodly part, you stick that thing out six inches. If you know, you know. So we're gonna unclamp, half second dwell, G25. That's an A20 specific code. But we're gonna go through our normal G650 synchronization process. Main and sub go in the same direction. So the, sub's gonna, the main's gonna come on forward, the sub's gonna come on backward, but they're going to be turning the same direction. G814, we're not defining an R, we're not orienting the, the spindles for picking off. You could, if you wanted them to pick off at zero, you could put R0 in there, it's fine. G650, W0. So we put W0 in there because we don't want the spindle to move. We do not want the sub spindle to move. If you put, if you put uh, Z minus 0.1, it's gonna rapid 100 thou off the end of your part. This number is relative to the end of the part. The machine, it knows where the end of the part is. So Z0 would be the face of the sub 
coming flush with the end of the part. So we're already up over the part. We don't want to come back off the part because then it might it might spin, you know, material stresses might cause it to spring and, and whip around a little bit. So we're just gonna leave it at W0 so it just doesn't move. M77, that's the spindle speed fluctuation detection off. And then we're going to move to Z1 inch. We could get rid of that, but it's in there. It's not hurting anything. So now we're synchronized, does its thing, moves up, clamps, spindles are synchronized. This is the supported turning. I'll put a note in there. Start supported turning. Turn the main back on. The main and the sub are now slaved. Whatever the main does, the sub will follow. So the spindle comes on. You can change your spindle RPMs. The spindles are locked together until you hit a G600. Call tool two back in. We're gonna turn the second half of our part come down more dwell so what we're going to do now we're chucked at the very end of our part our parts eight inches long we don't want to cut off all the way over here when we're only holding on to the very end of it because then you're you're going to have width in the other direction now your part's going to be waving around this way so we need to let go move up grab it again next to the cutoff and then cut it off so that's what this second sequence is call tool one slow the spindles down get them going the same direction open the sub fluctuation detect off. Here's our move 120 overall length minus 750 feet of 80 inches per minute. Half second dwell, close the sub and then we're off to the races again. We're still synced. We don't have to do anything special there. So now we're just calling tool one again. We're doing our cutoff procedure, runs through, does a cut, comes back, chamfers, cuts off. And then our G600 cancels that synchronization and, and homes the sub. And then we got our, our normal backside work. You know, we can do whatever else we need to. And so then down here is something else that you have to be aware of. So up here, remember, if you'll cast your mind back to 30 seconds ago, we put a four and a half inch work shift in there. We have to cancel that, otherwise the machine's gonna be off four and a half inches when it goes to rechuck for the next part. So we got a four and a half inch move, four and a half inch work shift, and now we are canceling that. We come down here, we cut off, we're done, open the sub, half second dwell, cancel the work shift, and then we have our G0, Z0, T0 that resets for the next part based on your machining length that has to match this work shift at the top. All your work shifts have to cancel. I'll try and show you once we get on the machine, your, your actual position in the machine coordinates has to be the same spot every time. Otherwise, you've got a work shift that's not canceling and you're gonna have problems. There's a good spot. Take a screenshot, write it down, copy paste it into your program like I do. That way you can, you don't have to know how it works or why it works, just that it works. And you can copy this and make it, you know, adjust the, you know, adjust the amount of rechuck. Maybe you're on an A32 and you've got almost 13 inches of stroke, but you're running a 24 inch part and you gotta have two rechucks in there. Same thing, you just have to have a, you know, maybe you break it up into thirds and you got an eight inch rechuck and an eight inch rechuck. So grab that and then just remember that whatever these, the move and the work shift, the, work, the move and the work shift has to match. And then after you're done with the part, you have to cancel the work shift. And then we'll jump over to the machine and I'll show you what this code actually does live and in full color. Now that I'm done rambling, I'm gonna show you what it actually looks like in the machine Then I'm gonna try and talk through it as it's happening so that you can reference what I was yammering about a minute ago with what it's actually doing in the machine and hopefully they'll do a good job showing that. We are teed up without further ado. Actually, I'll start in check mode. I'm gonna start running it. So the first part of this runs just like normal. Normally, first half of the part, facing off, coming up, turning, because nothing really happens until you get to that first half of the part and then you have to reach up. So I'll turn the op stop on there so I can stop it and talk through it a little bit slower while it's happening. So we're just gonna turn up and it should stop right there. So we are stopped at that Q and Command L10. If you cast your mind back, L10 before the sub comes up and grabs it for the supported turning. So I'm gonna turn my feed down. So now the sub is gonna come up to machine coordinates. You probably can't see that from back there. Machine coordinates, you watch over here. Machine coordinates, four inches, 750. Coming up over the part, grabs it and then it's gonna, we're chucked on the back and the front, the program stop, it's gonna let go on the front and then rechuck and grab it again and then let go with the back. So there, let go, move back, clamped again, the back let go. And now we're gonna do our G650 synchronization. We're synchronized. So now you're getting some juicy supported turning. You're getting two for one in this video. That's a hell of a deal if I ever seen one. So we're gonna do this supported turning 
finish the end of the part. And then it's gonna let go with the sub, move up, clamp closer to the cutoff. And we are set up with a through tube. If you're running long parts like this, you have to be set up with a through tube. There it's coming up. Yep, yep. And that's, don't be afraid to use your feet override. So it's gonna cut off, it's going to cancel the work shift, and then it's gonna reset the main back to where it started. And if you look at your machining positions, Z1 is gonna be the same. It's gonna be the same point as where we started. If we ran another one, it should come back to that same spot. If it doesn't come back to that same spot, you've got a work shift that's not canceling correctly, and your Z will move, your, your main will move by that amount every time it runs apart until it over travels. So if you're getting, there's another quick tip for you. If you're getting over travels every 10 parts, if it's consistent, 10 parts, 20 parts, you've got a work shift that's not canceling and it's moving a thou or 10 thou or 50 thou every time it runs apart. Are you just getting all kinds of good information in this video? You should definitely share this and like it. So there it is. I got an eight and one eighth inch part out of a machine with six and a half inches of stroke. It kind of went through the machine pretty fast because there's not a lot going on, but hopefully it helps you reconcile what's happening in the machine with what I was trying to explain over on the screen capture on Simcoe. So that's how you do a rechucking operation so you can make the most of machines with limited capacities. If you got questions, put them in the comments. If you liked it, leave a like, and we'll see you in the next video.